This next story is called The Woman Who Fell From the Sky. It's an Iroquois creation story retold by John Beerhorst. Before the world was new, sky people lived on a floating island high in the air. The sun had not yet been created, but light shone from the flowers of a tall tree. The sky country was a quiet place. No one ever wept. No one ever died. No children were ever born. This is the story. In the sky country, there lived a woman who had a husband. One day, hearing voices under her heart, the sky woman knew that she would be the mother of children. But when she told her husband, he became jealous. In this anger, he uprooted the tree. And as the tree's flowers wilted, the sky country grew dark. Through the hole where the tree had stood, water could be seen far below. Curious, the sky woman stepped to the edge of the hole. She looked down, and at that moment, her husband pushed her. Then he straightened his thoughts and calmed down, but it was too late. The sky woman was already falling. Birds and animals had not yet been created, but as the woman fell through the air, sky people changed into ducks and locked their wings to cushion her fall. Below, there was only water, no earth, but sky people changed into water animals, and the muskrat dived to the bottom. When it came back up, it had mud in its claws, which the others spread onto the back of a turtle. Now we will be lucky, said the water animals, because doesn't the sky woman have the power of creation? As the woman landed on the turtle's back, the mud began to grow, and then she walked around this tiny earth, around and around, throwing her power ahead of her. When she stopped, the earth was as large as it is today. She threw a handful of earth into the sky, and it quickly became sprinkled with stars. Now something bright will appear, she said. It will be a helper. It will be called the sun. And then morning came, and the sun rose for the first time. The sky woman felt something stirring under her heart. Two lives were coming, one called Sapling, born to be gentle, and one called Flint, whose mind was hard as stone. Sapling and Flint grew rapidly. Soon they knew their mother's thoughts. When Sapling ran over the earth, fresh soil was formed beneath his feet, and maple trees and all the other plants sprang up in his footprints. The earth is alive, he said, and then he threw up a handful of soil, and birds and animals flew off in all directions. Sapling created two-way rivers for swift travel back and forth, but Flint, whose mind was hard, said, that would be too easy, and he made each river flow in one direction only, adding falls and ripples. Sapling had created fish, but Flint threw small bones into them to make it more difficult for the people who were soon to come. Then Flint created monsters, but Sapling drove them underground. Flint created a great white man called Snow who couldn't move. But Sapling breathed life into him and made him travel so spring would come. Sapling took earth and made human beings. He took a portion of his own life and put it into each body and a portion of his own mind and put it into each head. Remember, he said, you are the children of the Sky Woman because she gave you the mind and also the power. Then he showed them how to make houses and build fires. When their work was done, Sapling and Flint rose up from the earth, traveling along the Milky Way. What was happening? Each one was taking a separate path. The divided pathway can still be seen, showing that there are two minds in the universe, one that is hard like Flint and one that is gentle like Sapling. When Sapling and Flint had disappeared, the Sky Woman threw herself into the fire and flew upward on the smoke. You cannot follow me, she said to the people, only your thoughts. When the smoke from your fires rise, then you will speak your words. We give thanks to the earth, our mother, who supports our feet. We give thanks to the flowing rivers that pass by on earth. We give thanks to the plants, our medicines. We give thanks to the animals and to the birds whose voices lift our minds. We give thanks to the stars that light our journeys. Our thoughts are carried upward. With our words and in our minds, we give thanks for the word that is always living. Habu.